What's up y'all, Fast Alpha here. I wanted to do a video talking about the installation and setup of the KW V3 kit, uh, coilover kit for the Alfa Romeo Giulia Q4. So as you guys know, I have the Q4 non-quadrifolio. I have the regular suspension, not the adaptive dampers or anything like that. So luckily uh, for those of us uh, without the adaptive dampers, uh, the setup is a little bit simpler. Um, but first, a couple of uh, admin notes and tech tips. So this kit cost uh, almost close to $3,000. I bought it from Alpha 9 Supply. Uh, currently, right now, they have the best deal on the internet, I believe. Great people over there. Um, this kit was custom made in Germany. They don't really stock kits for the Q4s on, on the shelves in the U.S., so I was given a seven to eight week lead time, showed up in about 32 days, which is absolutely amazing. Completely blew me away. So huge shout out to KW and Alpha 9 Supply. Go order from them for all your KW needs. Uh, moving on, the quality of this kit is absolutely amazing. It's all stainless steel, typical KW quality uh, that you know, everyone has come to know over the years, KW is a staple in the automotive brand for both OEM and aftermarket uh, applications. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, this is going to, you know, why am I getting this kit, right? Why am I putting this on this car when I already have the H&R uh, lowering springs, which I love so much, that have treated me so well over the past um, maybe six, seven months that I've had them installed. Good question. Well, full disclosure, I'm moving overseas and I'm taking this vehicle. I need something that's going to be able to deal with the European roads and, um, you know, the tracks, because I plan to track the car a lot while I'm over there. Um, I need something that's going to be able to deal with that, um, you know, for a long time, uh, longevity-wise and reliability-wise. Uh, springs are great for a temporary solution to increase the handling and lower the ride height of a vehicle. However, long term, springs will always wear out the stock components of your suspension, um, i.e. Uh, camber and toe arms, uh, the shocks, the bushings, all those things because they weren't meant for a lowered ride height. And the, the H&R springs here, while they're very well developed and they're a great product, they're not meant for longevity and, and high loads for years and years and years. So, um, you know, and, and also the other thing is I want to be able to raise and lower the car. Uh, I don't know how the roads are going to be where I specifically am going to be. I know that there's a lot of like old towns and things and I don't want to be uh, bottoming out or, you know, having to deal with not being able to raise the car if I need more ground clearance. Um, so, okay, wanted to get that out of the way. Back to the suspension. So this is the Variant 3. Uh, that means that you have independent um, damping adjustment, independent rebound adjustment, and you have height adjustment. Um, like I said, I don't have the ad uh, adaptive dampers, so I didn't need any of that electronic wiring, so that was a whole mess I didn't have to worry about. First things first, when you pull this out of the box, like I said, you'll notice the quality. But what I really recommend is that you read the instructions first before you absolutely do anything. This will tell you how to set up the vehicle. How, I'm sorry, how to set up the um, suspension. Make sure everything is within spec. Also, it should have a little thing that says Alfa Romeo Julia. I'm sorry, Alfa Romeo Julia, um, and it's got a little code there. Uh, I can't find it right now, that, but there was a paper that uh, specified all-wheel drive. It's not this exact paper, but there was a paper that specified um, that this was for the all-wheel drive um, uh, Julia. But like I said, I, I emphasize that you read here because it'll tell you how you need to set up um, the dampers and the rebounding on the shocks before you put it on the car because last thing you want to do is put all this on the car and then realize that each corner is doing something differently because um, you didn't set it up properly so I actually went through and I used their little adjustment tool here at the top of the uh, for the rebound which is at the top and then the bump compression is at the bottom same on the rear shocks 
uh, bump is at the bottom, rebound is at the top, and I verified that um, the it was set to the right settings that it claimed it was when it shipped. So yes, they do set it correctly. If you come in here and you start twisting these right away, you're gonna throw off the height adjustment that came from KW. So I suggest that you do not twist anything. All of the height settings, leave them as they are. They're a baseline so that you can throw the suspension on the car and drive off essentially. So don't adjust anything just yet. Uh, let's go into a couple of tools that you're gonna need. Uh, some of these things are common sense, but I figured I'd go over it. So here's my jack setup. It's the same setup I used for, uh, I used for the brake video. All right, if you have a Julia or an Alfa Romeo, you know that we have jack posts. We don't have jacking rails. So I used two of my trusted um, hydraulic jacks and they'll hold the car up for the duration. I have a chalk block in the rear. Uh, as well as the parking brake engage, so double redundancy there to make sure I don't have any um, catastrophic failure. And then I have two actual jack stands positioned under the hard points of the subframe. I know you can barely see that, but um, that's a hard point in the subframe. So were one of these jacks to fail, um, the car would land safely on the actual jack stands uh, without damaging anything. So I'm all about redundancy and safety. I've used this setup before and it works great. Um, so yeah, let's go into the tools that you'll need. So the biggest tool that you will need is an offset spring compressor. I know you guys and gals are probably used to the spring compressors that have two, two sets of clamps, one on each side and you, and you, and you twist one and you twist the other until the spring compresses. This is a specifically, this is specifically a McPherson strut spring compressor that is, as you can see, designed to maximize space and efficiency. And it's a 21 millimeter hex nut down here. And you slide this into the spring, you compress it and you pull it right out. This stops you from having to disassemble the rear end of the Alfa Romeo Giulia just to pull out the spring. So this is a great time saver. It's about a hundred bucks on Amazon. I highly suggest you get one. This will be my first time using it. I'm going based on, only based on what the forums have said. So we'll see but um, enough people have vouched for this thing that I'm sure it will work. Uh, I got a set of pry bars here. You should just have those in case. Uh, dealing with suspension and bushings and that kind of thing. Control arms, always have a set of pry bars. And then I got the basic tools. So, you know, the T30 Torx bit, uh, the pass-through wrench set with um, uh, some sockets, some 12-point some sockets on there, um, your basic uh, forged, um, you know, socket set, as well as the E-Torx uh, socket set. You will need an 18 millimeter E-Torx as well as a 20 millimeter E-Torx socket. So I went and ran to the store and bought, this is a 20, actually the 20's down here. I had to buy the whole set to buy one, you know how it is. But I went and bought that just so that I'd have it. If I don't use it, I can always return it, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, you know, have and not need instead of need and not have, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, hopefully this, you know, kind of explains what the V3s are about. And uh, with this suspension, I should be able to pretty much do anything. Um, it should last the, the, you know, the lifetime of the car. I do plan on taking this car on the Nürburgring. I do plan on taking this car on the Autobahn. Uh, I do plan on trying to take it down to Italy, hopping on some of the circuits. Um, Monza is definitely on my bucket list. I know they do track days all the time. So I wanted a suspension that'll be able to keep up with what I've got coming for the car. And, um, you know, so that's why I went ahead and just decided to pull this trigger on a suspension that's gonna last me um, as long as I uh, keep the car. One thing I didn't go over is the KW does give you these spanner wrenches um, in this nice uh, portfolio here. This is to adjust height, obviously. They give you another tool. Um, that you can adjust uh, the uh, rebound with as well. Um, or this is a, I'm sorry, this is for the set screws, Allen keys for the set screws um, for the ride height and everything like that. So, all right guys, um, about 30 minutes ago, I went ahead and sprayed everything down, all the uh, bolts and stuff down with this uh, deep creep stuff here. It's kind of a mechanic trick to make installation uh, easier. I'll show you what I mean. Um, sorry, uh, removal and installation easier. Uh, so I went ahead and sprayed 
this bolt down, okay? Um, the end links are fresh. I just installed these the other day. Great upgrade, by the way. I'll do another video on that alone. Uh, but I, uh, I sprayed this down because this has to come out. And then this bottom bolt here has to come out. And then the three top bolts up here have to come out. And then essentially the strut's just going to be able to pull uh, right out. So I sprayed that on both sides to make the job easier. Um, other than that, uh, I think we uh, should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll let you know where I end up. Thanks. All right, y'all. So real quick, first step, we've got to go ahead and take the strut out. Sorry about this lighting. Uh, we're in a headlamp right now, but I think you can see everything you need to see. So the things that are going to have to come out are um, this uh, joint here uh, connecting the upper part of the wishbone to the lower part um, of the upper control arm, the lower control arm. So this is going to have to come out. It's an e-torx with a regular uh, socket on the end. And then uh, this is going to have to come out as well, this one right here going to have to undo the top of the end link um, and that'll hang loose and then you got to undo these brackets here you have got to go ahead and take off these three bolts so go ahead and do those and the uh, the whole assembly should come out also real quick y'all make sure that when you're doing this you have a way to support the control arm once it eventually is disconnected from here I purchased a bottle jack from O'Reilly's specifically for this. So you can use this or you can use a regular uh, scissor jack, whatever you want to do, but have a way to support this control arm uh, because eventually when you disconnect everything, the spindle or the hub is going to sag and you don't want it pulling at the bushings and at the brake lines and everything like that. Okay, folks, so uh, we have the first strut successfully out. Took a little bit of uh, gymnastics to get the strut out of there, but it comes out fairly easy, uh, just like everybody said it would. You are going to have to remove or just un, uh, unclip this um, sensor wire here uh, from the side of the uh, chassis there. And there's another spot lower down here that it uh, clips into just to give you room. Uh, to remove uh, the strut from uh, the control arm, but here it is and so the next step is going to be uh, compressing the spring taking the top head off and um, uh, Basically putting the new top hat on the coilovers and then reinstalling into the car So I told you guys I bought the uh, spring compressor right there I'm gonna go ahead put that on there compress the spring and then reuse that top hat. Okay folks, so I can confirm that this tool indeed does work and it works safely and effectively and very easily. Like I said, you just take an impact gun like I have here with a 21 uh, millimeter uh, socket. Make sure you put the cups over the springs and then you uh, go ahead and fire it and it'll clamp the springs closed and then I'm using a vice grips with a towel here uh, To hold the shaft still while I took off the top hat which we will now be installing on the KW springs uh, Or I'm sorry the KW um, uh, Shocks to make the struts All right Now before we move on to the next step, which is fitting the top hat to the new strut I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the two. I was trying to find out if um, there was a left or right specific strut, uh, but they are not marked as left or right. And uh, at least from the surface, they are identical. So there doesn't seem to be an orientation uh, preference or difference between either of these struts. It looks like you can mount either of these on the driver's or passenger side. Um, and I think that's because they have both of the wings here versus the stock one. It just has the one wing for the uh, uh, sensor attachment point. Um, you can look at the, the forks here. 
the KW fork is, uh, so this is, these are both steel. This is stamp steel, obviously. Um, if I were to guess, yeah, stamp steel. This is stainless steel that's been cut and welded um, and reinforced greatly so that it does not uh, deflect or bend at all. If I had to say, guess the weight. KW weighs a bit more, I would say, or maybe, maybe right about the same. No, I think the KW weighs a bit more, it's, and it's more centralized in this area over here. Um, you know, but there's more going on inside the KW strut, uh, and also with the reinforcement than uh, the stamped steel uh, suspension. I think also the spring uh, weighs more, it looks a little bit more substantial, but... All right, just wanted to show that to y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and fit the top hat on now. All right, people, so in order to put this top hat on, I just wanna show you how this is gonna go. Obviously, we've already set the height here. I've set the, uh, uh, you know, I've tightened the Allen key. Spring is on, uh, in the right orientation. Small end at the bottom. You're gonna take the top hat here. All right, this top hat, it's got a little indent where the end of the uh, coil needs to sit. So you just, it slides right over it just like this. And you're going to basically twist it. You don't have to hold the coil, I gotta do this. Sorry, I gotta do this with two hands here. All right, but now the coil is sitting where that indent is right there. And the top hat is snug. You can see that I, I'm moving the whole thing by the top hat now. That's how you know it's seated right. If you look all around, it's, it's seated correctly. Um, on the strut all right so I've got my vice grip here with the microfiber towel making sure we don't damage the uh, uh, suspension shaft shock body shaft and you're gonna go ahead and use the supplied and brand new nut that they give you don't reuse the one from the OEM shock all right um, screw that on and the manual calls for 26 foot-pounds of torque just so you guys know, this is a 19 millimeter uh, nut here. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And then um, I, I, the, my torque wrench is sitting over there on the shelf, so I can't show you that part because I'll need all my hands for that. But you're just gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Hold it with your knees if you're doing it solo like me or have a buddy hold it, tighten it down 26 foot pounds, and then you're good to throw it back in the car. All right. Hey, what's up, y'all? So we're halfway done. I've got the fronts on, bolted up. I haven't even begun to adjust height yet, though. Uh, these are actually lower than the H&R springs were. In fact, they were so low that when I released the jack, I couldn't get the jack back up from under the car, so I had to put on uh, these uh, little riser skid plate things there so that um, I could get the jack out from underneath the car. Anyway... Look at the wheel gap. The wheel is completely off the ground. Look at how little that suspension um, is sagging right in there. And you can barely see the KW, uh, the new KW strut in there. Look at how much the H&R springs and the OEM suspension is sagging. Look at that massive difference. Look at that. And look at that massive difference. So essentially what that means is that this suspension has much more give, much more travel, and as a result will have much less grip in a high speed, high G corner than the KW. So that there you can see it for yourself. Granted, KW is not KW isn't broken in. That's a suspension that's been on the car for five years, give or take, so it's worn. However, you can see the massive difference. This is about to be a night and day difference when it comes to handling. All right. Okay, y'all, so the fronts are in and now we've moved to the rear. So I've already got the first rear shock out of the car. So in order to do that, obviously what you're gonna need to do is jack the, jack the rear up, support it. You're gonna need to put some sort of support under the actual control arm just to take tension off of this bolt right here. The shock mount goes right here and this bolt goes through it. 
this is the longest bolt ever so you're gonna need to um, you know uh, basically loosen this bolt out as far as you can uh, it's so long that I actually had to undo one of the clips in the underbody panel so that I could get more room behind there to continue to loosen it out with my tool um, and once you've got once you've got it loosened enough I took a pry bar right here and I separated this um, this link bushing here it's not an end link but it's some sort of other link bushing uh, that goes to the toe arm I separated that from the rest of this and uh, the shock essentially just got enough clearance and kind of fell out um, before all that though I did loosen up the three shock mount bolts or three small bolts look like this real easy so now the tough part comes with the spring and jack the car up some more so I can get that spring compressor tool in there um, and compress it as much as we can and pull it out so there's two ways to get this spring out you can follow the instructions the shop manual and what that what they tell you to do is to disconnect the camera arm disconnect the toe arm and disconnect the rear sway bar push down on the control arm pull the spring out in my opinion that's a ridiculous procedure to do just to get the spring out uh, to have to disconnect all of those things um, because I am no doubt going to have to remove the spring at least once or, or twice more in order to adjust the height because the height is adjusted on the spring and you cannot adjust the height with the spring on the car which I really really don't like that design but it is what it is that's one thing uh, about the KW coilovers that I would change if I could that's kind of a kind of a very inconvenient design but nonetheless my plan is to compress the spring as much as I can um, and then using a pry bar and using that spring compressor pull the spring out and um, that way we'll be able to reinstall it without having to lose or I'll loosen any of this and hopefully keeping the alignment that I have somewhat okay so that I can drive the car once it's all been set up uh, to the alignment shop without um, you know the alignment being crazy off so we will see all right folks so just to show you what this looks like it is possible to get this offset spring compressor in here on the spring. Granted, you're gonna need a, a lot of ground clearance. As you can see, I've jacked the car up substantially. The rear is much higher than the front, but you do have ground clearance to get in here. Now, I won't be able to get my impact on there because there's not enough clearance for that. Um, however, um, you can adequately and safely seat that spring into the um, compressor properly to where the spring coils are over um, the inside lips in there and uh, you'll, you'll just have to manually crank down and decompress the spring all right okay y'all so i finally got the spring off so what you're going to have to do to get the spring off is clamp that as far down as you can um, and then you're essentially just going to have to twist this um, on the spring seat and basically start unscrewing it from the spring seat. I know that's kind of a weird way to describe it but you're it's it's sitting up here like this and you're gonna have to twist it like that um, but I used the help of a pry bar at the very bottom of the spring seat to help get the first coil over this, uh, over this nub right here. So once you get the first coil over this nub, while it's still compressed, um, it, almost, it basically just falls out. So once again, huge, 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 huge shout out and kudos to this tool right here. This is the MVP. I would not be able to have done any of this job without this tool. The other spring compressors are too ungainly. They wouldn't have fit in this tight space at all, but this tool makes it seriously look easy. 
All right, so let's go ahead, put the new spring and shock in, and move on to the other side. All right, just for some clarification, when I said that you're gonna need to take a pry bar, um, I wanna show you guys exactly what I mean. So as you can see, the compressor is on here. The spring is uh, properly compressed right now. Um, I can actually move the spring by hand. See, I can rotate that. I'm rotating the entire spring there. Um, you want to take a pry bar, right, and I won't be able to do it on video because, you know, uh, obviously I need both hands, but you want to take this pry bar and get it under the edge of that spring and pull up and just kind of work your way around it until you can get the bottom coil off of that rubber seat. And then it just pops out. All right. All right, y'all. So I finally have the springs adjusted to the height that I want them at. Um, they came at around 10 millimeters. I put them at 15, I'm sorry, one centimeter, and I went to 1.5 centimeters. I might have just said the same thing. Anyway, um, quick important note when it comes to uh, installing the new rear shock mounts onto, I'm sorry, installing the old OEM shock mounts onto the new H&R uh, shock is... Uh, make sure that you use all of the included hardware. There's two nuts here that go stacked one on another and then there's a washer that is now hidden up under here. Make sure you put in that direct order. I use a little bit. I use one drop of Loctite at the top here. I don't want to have to deal with a loose shock mount ever. So I just use a drop of uh, semi-permanent Loctite. And also a really, really big key thing. Make sure you line up the shock mount with the rebound and damping adjustment window. So this is the outside of the coilover. I say that because, or the outside of the shock, I say that because when you take the wheel off to do your adjustments, if you're at the track or just in your garage, and you installed the shock, you know, facing the other way, you have no idea what the adjustments are saying. Because it's very easy to install this foot up here uh, backwards facing me, which I did at first and then I realized when I was about to put it in. So make sure that this middle foot, which faces the outside of the car always, is in line with the front of the shock because you could easily install it backwards and then find yourself having to um, uh, redo work. So learn from, learn from my mistake. All right, let's throw them in. All right, y'all, so finally done. By this time, y'all should pretty much have everything on. Strut mount secure, tightened. Uh, you should be able to see the rebound here as well as uh, bump adjustment there. This bolt should be back in here threaded through. Um, you should have your spring seated in. Make sure that the spring is actually seated into the perch fully and the perch is seated up against the chassis fully. Same thing right here. Make sure that the spring goes all the way around the entire perch and it's seated. It's not going to seat entirely like that. Uh, see how there's a gap right there? It's not going to seat entirely until we actually put the car on the ground and the weight uh, pushes the spring into it. Uh, make sure little things like this. You put the uh, brake line or brake sensor uh, back into its little uh, uh, slot there. Other than that, just, you know, take a quick look around the car, make sure everything's straight. I already did the other side. Show you guys that as well. Okay, so now we have the entire system on. And this is where the hard part and the fun stuff starts is adjusting the height. So like I told you, the front is already way low. I raised the, um, the rears a little bit, but I ran into a problem. I couldn't actually, with the method I was using to put the springs in, uh, avoiding um, disconnecting the camber arm, the toe arm, and the uh, sway bar end link, and the shock, and dropping the control arm. Um, that's one way to do it, disconnecting all that stuff. Obviously, it takes forever. It's like an hour per side per adjustment of height, which is ridiculous. So, um, the way I was doing it was I was just using the spring compressor right here to compress the spring and put it in here. The only issue is that um, 
you only have so much room because this control arm won't drop. So um, I can only, you know, get so much height in this. Uh, so we're gonna see where that puts us. And, but I think I have an idea. The, the way that I think will work to adjust this without having to disconnect everything is um, compress the spring again to where this is loose and then just hand loosen this because there is space when this is loose. Uh, hand loosen this, get to the t uh, height you want, the height on this, and then re or uh, decompress the spring and it'll close back up. So I think that's what we're gonna have to do. Um, that method, while it is kind of labor intensive, it is still less time and less work than disconnecting the camber toe sway bars and the shock every time you want to adjust the height. Um, just FYI, if you have an alignment, every time you disconnect camber toe, uh, the sway bar, all that thing, it's going to throw your alignment off. So that's why I'm really trying to avoid um, dealing with all that when I want to uh, adjust a ride height. But anyway, I'm um, going to go ahead and lower it, see where we're at, and make some more adjustments. All right. What's up everybody? Welcome back. It's been a couple of days and I've been driving the wheels off of this car ever since I put on the new KW V3 suspension. I've been trying to break in the suspension and throw everything that I've got at it and man, she has not disappointed. I will say KW knows exactly what they are doing. This car feels so good. It feels like a brand new Julia, better than OEM, to be honest with you. From the moment that I took it off the jack stands and drove it out of my driveway, I could instantly tell um, that the suspension was so much better, firmer, better feeling than the previous one. I had no idea what I was missing this whole time with those springs. Not to talk bad about the H&R springs because they are great for the price, but they do not hold a candle at all to a truly well-engineered and well-designed coilover suspension uh, like this. I've got the height where I want it. Um, I had to adjust the front maybe two or three times. I eyeballed, I completely eyeballed the rear, make sure they were uh, the same, and she is absolutely spot on. I haven't had to adjust it at all. Came out perfect. I think I got the front and the rear just about as perfect as you can get them with the same amount of ride height with maybe just a little rake in the rear. I'm not sure it's kind of an, it's kind of up to the, the eyeball depending on how you look at it, but I wanted it level. Uh, Cause as you know about Julia's that cool thing about their chassis is they are 50, 50 perfect weight distribution. So uh, it's got the, you know, it's got the bones to be a really good handling car. And when you throw a suspension like this at it, it just, it just completely goes absolutely nuts. This car is absolutely amazing. Feels like a brand new car. I cannot, I, I can't even exaggerate how well this car feels and uh, handles now. And it just looks absolutely amazing. Yes, it, it is higher than when I had it on um, the H&R Springs, but I'll say this, it handles a thousand times better. And I will also say this, there's a misconception in the car community that the lower you go, the better it handles, and that's simply not true. There's a sweet spot, uh, there's a sweet spot between slammed to the floor and OEM height that the a car handles its best. And I believe, I don't think I've found it, you know, because I'm not an expert, but I, I've gotten close with the Julia. And this thing just it looks absolutely amazing. Just absolutely stunning. Um, it's set up so well. Uh, as you guys know, or should know, as soon as you put on a new suspension, you need to take this car straight to the alignment rack. I'll throw up my alignment specs on the screen here uh, so you can see what I did. But I've got just about the same amount of camber front and rear with a little less camber in the rear. I did that for tire wear and also because I want the maximum amount of traction 
even though I do track this car occasionally, this is a daily driver, and I want to get the most life out of my tires, and I want the most traction on the street. So, um, you know, I just got about a degree and some change of camber in the rear. That does make the rear a little squirrely, which is kind of fun, but this car is all-wheel drive, so um, it'll never get, you know, out of hand. For those of you with the rear-wheel drive, Julia, um, you all may want to uh, dial in a little bit more rear camber just for safety um, but you know whatever that's your preference um, you know what else is there to say super easy to adjust very straightforward install quality was great quality control is great nothing is loose I've gone in and checked over everything I did I did so a couple hundred miles into my break in here and everything was fine still tight the suspension still looks great, sounds great, there's no noises, it's nice and smooth and quiet. Uh, it's just, it's everything that I hoped it would be, honestly, and it absolutely blows away uh, lowering springs. Now, I'm not trying to talk crap about lowering springs, they're a great option um, if you're on a budget and you're not going to keep the car or just don't want to put that much money into the car, I get it, but lowering springs have absolutely nothing on a professionally set up or uh, manufactured suspension at all. This is in an entirely different league than um, a set of lowering springs. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. So um, yeah, if you're thinking about doing a suspension, you know, don't waste your time on anything else. Just go with the KW. Uh, there's there's another Julia uh, YouTube um, He's got a quadrifolio auto fanatic. I'm sure if you've watched this you've watched some of his videos He also swears by the KW suspension I mean there's a reason why people rave about the suspension and I know it now. It's just absolutely amazing the damping the rebound the control you have over the handling of the car you know this thing can go from Cadillac Cruiser to race car with just a couple of clicks and turns of uh, the damping and rebound knobs. It's just absolutely amazing. And it looks so good. So, um, like I mentioned before, I'll have a full review of the actual drivability of these um, in a little while. I want to give it some time to truly, uh, you know, formulate what I think as far as, you know, um, are, are these coilovers worth the money? But so far, the answer is absolutely, it's probably the first modification I should have done, to be honest with you. It, they're that good. So, well, I hope this video was helpful and insightful to all of you who are thinking about doing this modification and thinking about installing coilovers on your Alfa Romeo Giulia. I'm sure this install process is pretty much the same for any coilovers that you get. So even if you don't buy KW coilovers, you can probably apply the same fundamentals to whichever brand that you do get. However, I 100% recommend KW. Anyway, y'all, until next time, it was good. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. See you later.